Yes, I'm Zazi. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show, and it's time to commemorate some absolute heroes. Yes, as the Western Cape's fire season begins with unprecedented intensity, we're extending our utmost gratitude to the brave volunteer firefighters who tirelessly battle to contain these blazes. And this morning, we have the honor of speaking with some of these heroes to gain insight into their experiences and the challenges they face on the front line. And let me tell you, there are many to talk about. So let's give a big welcome to Claire Lotta, the CEO of Volunteer Wildlife Service. We also have NPC alongside uh, Robin Munia, is a teacher and a VWS firefighter. And then Jeremy Rose, an environmental scientist and also a VWS firefighter. Come on, we're give an incredible of course, panel of heroes Thank right you. here, Thank guys. You. Thank you. How are we feeling? It's been a tiring season already, I'm sure. Woo! Yeah, like, you know what, I'm, I'm looking at this, so we we obviously been following all the news headlines and, you know, there was evacua ev evacuation notices put in place and then it was lifted and there was flare-ups and was put back in place mm. and it's all over. Um, we've seen so many breakouts and fires and I've got to ask you, especially you guys, what is it like just stepping into that front lines of battling these blazes and keeping communities safe? Give us a, a bit of an insight as to, as to what you experience. Yeah, it's been an incredibly busy season for all of the fire mm. services in the Western Cape. Um, for those of us not in the province, it's, a, it's an area where we have very hot, dry summers and very strong winds blowing. And of course, that, yeah. uh, that leads to wildfires picking up. This Extremely season has dry been conditions very well. dry conditions. The season's been particularly busy. We've had, a, um, as you mentioned, I think unprecedented was the word you used. It's yeah. certainly the busiest since I've been involved in, in wildfire in the Western Cape. We've been busy uh, since mid-December almost every day. We've had uh, crews going out and call-outs uh, sent for more. So we're all volunteers, and we have about 300 uh, volunteers across our bases in Cape Town and Stellenbosch and Surrounds. And uh, they work alongside many of the other uh, agencies, the national parks, the Cape Nature, the municipalities. Um, and we send our crews out to help when there are fires and when they, when they ask for us. So mm -hmm. it's been uh, incredibly busy, and I think maybe Robin can just talk about how many fires we've been doing over the past few weeks alone. Um, mm. I think everybody's really, really stretched and uh, I'm sure. really, really struggling this year. Yeah, I mean, Robin, it has been going on, I mean, since I think the intensity started December period, yeah. to be very honest. We're now already in Feb, still going at it. What's the, the, the sort of feeling been like on the front lines, not only for you as firefighters when it comes to the challenges you're facing, but also the impact you're having on the communities that you're actually helping? Because at the end of the day, there's some really incredible work that's happening here. It's not just the fact that you're slaving away for the environment, but these communities, these people that are loving and appreciating your services like no other. You've had a chance to see some yeah. of that? Yeah, definitely. I think it has felt relentless, is the word that comes to mind. Relentless, yeah. Yeah, I think with the big Simon Sound fire started kind of mid towards the end of December over Christmas period, mm. that, that had already felt like we'd had a busy season. We had a brief lull and for the last two weeks it's again been relentless. Um, but it has, it has been really good to see the community come out and support us and all the other agencies. Mm. Um, we felt appreciated and it's, it's, it's made, made us you know, able to get up the next morning and, and go and do it again. Yeah. So, Look, yeah. I, I don't think we can fully understand what you guys are going through when you're in the moment and, and battling these fires because we were talking blazes of, I don't know how many meters high. I mean, it's, it's absolutely incredible. The heat, the mm. smoke, the, everything that goes with it. But it is so damaging to our environment, um, Claire. And I want to ask, you know, from your side, Fire safety, I mean, yes, we have wind, we have very dry conditions, but in terms of these communities and, and, and the, the local surrounds, what advice can you give at this stage, seeing and experienced what you've been through? What can you tell, I think, people out there in communities in terms of just looking after the environment around? I mean, how do we, is there a way to, to, to safeguard ourselves and to stop fires from happening? What causes them, all of that? Look, there are things that homeowners and people can do, absolutely. Um, the FPAs, which are the fire protection agencies, do a lot of work in helping communities protect their homes. Uh, there's many programs they run as well. Um, you know, they great source of information for people. Um, there's a lot of literature out there, what to do if you are perhaps in, you know, potentially in, in, in facing fire coming down a mountain. There is lots of literature out there. Um, the one thing I can say is please, <laughs> please listen to reputable you know, yeah. um, sites websites and sites and sources, like your FPAs, your municipalities, and not just whatever happens on socials, you know. There, there are certain ones that really please listen to the right ones. Yeah. Um, that's one advice I can give. Um, the other thing is to please make sure your fires are put out. Um, people think that just because it's, you know, it's just, you know, you've kind of put a bit of sand over it. Um, once the wind picks up, you know, it really has to be cold. Yeah. It's not a matter of just covering it. Your fire needs to be cold, because a bit of wind can create a spark. Um, 
and that's and it's that's one little of, ember. It's that, one little mm, ember, and it's the wind, and it's all the factors that surround that. So mm. that's a big one. If people could just make sure they do that, yeah. um, we've already started. And, okay. and, and report it in. When you see smoke, when you yeah. see uh, any sign of fire, don't assume that somebody else has done yeah. it. Make sure that uh, you are calling those those emergency numbers. If you're in Cape Town or the surrounds, there's there's a few numbers which are important, but the easiest one to remember, of course, is just 112 from your cell phone. Just 112. Somebody else may not have reported it. Make sure that you do that. And if you live on the urban edge, you live close to um, an area you know, on, on the edge of the mountain, make sure that your home has some defensible space around it. We mm. are not structural fight fire firefighters. We're yeah. wild and firefighters. We work usually up in the top of the mountain. But if we do end up on the edge of, uh, of town, we like to see that there's some space where you can access around the edge of a property. There's some cleared space. Oh, okay. You don't have vegetation right up against the houses. Um, mm. And when, when things do start to uh, get interesting and you do have fires coming down into towns, um, listen to the emergency services. Uh, there were, as you mentioned, a couple of times evacuation mm. orders uh, issued in the Overstrand over the last few weeks. It really helps the fire services if you can uh, follow those instructions, get out of the way yeah. effectively and mm. make sure that they have the space to do their work and that uh, the sure. roads are clear. i, I got to ask, uh, as volunteer firefighters, Robin, you're a teacher. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy, you're an envi environmental scientist. How does it work? Like, you'll be busy with your day job. Do you get a call? Do you, know, do you immediately drop everything that you're doing if you're in a classroom? How, do, how does it work? How does your life work? Yeah, so I, with my job, I unfortunately don't have one boss. I've got 27 little bosses that rely on me <laughs> here in my day to day. Um, and so unfortunately for me, it's, it's, not as, uh, it's not as easy as just dropping what I'm doing. Um, with us being volunteers, if we do get calls during the day, we, they, they usually come, we have basically a big WhatsApp group with all our members. We'll get a call from the partners and we'll send out a request for uh, our volunteers to respond. And whoever can respond, yeah. we'll put their name down and, and can go out. We, we generally will be able to get crews out during the day, but we're far better. We get far more responses from our volunteers at night and over the weekends when people are, you know, have their downtime. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it is, of course, a stretch. We work, yeah. uh, all of us have day jobs course, or yeah. our students or run businesses. So um, doing this as well is, is, is a lot. Um, yeah. And it, it <coughs> takes a lot out of our volunteers. This season has been, as Robin said, particularly busy. Um, so, as, as he mentioned, we'll have a, a call out that gets sent out and if you're available, you'll respond and then we'll put together our crews and they'll go out with our vehicles uh, to assist our partners. Yeah. Usually at night, we spend quite a lot of time up on mountains in the middle of the night um, and then you, you work your 12 hours on the fire line and you end up yep. uh, back at work the next morning. A Quick little bit, shower. A little bit smokier, yeah. sometimes you have time <laughs> for a shower. Yep. Um, a little bit smoky and uh, a little bit tired, but uh, you feel that you've achieved something and uh, it's, it's good to, to, to do that. Oh, yeah. That's well, insane. Clear, Rob. Robin, Jeremy, thank, thank you. you all so much for the incredible work you're doing. I think on behalf of South Africa, I officially want to take this moment to say thank you, not only to your team, but all firefighters across the country right now yeah. that are sacrificing the most and doing the most to protect our community. I think from everybody, that's a big round of applause. Just to say thank you. We really, truly do appreciate you, and we can't thank you for all your service. I think we'd have some fun with you after this. So, Looking uh, forward to it. Again, we'll get into <laughs> some of the more interesting sides of what they really, truly go through. I'm going to be putting on a suit just to show you how hard it is to sacrifice not only your body, but going out there and trying to protect others. So it's going to get interesting. You definitely want to stick around with this. Nice, guys. <laughs>